turn of events in 1988 than Mike Alexander. He ran the full NASCAR Busch Grand National Circuit in 1987, had plans to try to win the championship in that division in 1988, and he did run all of the races. But Ned, when Bobby Allison was hurt in that terrible crash in Pocono back in June, a driver was needed to sit behind this wheel. And of all the drivers out there, Mike Alexander was picked to fill some very big shoes. Mike Alexander's goal since his racing career began as a teenager has always been to make it on the Winston Cup circuit. He tried to crack the big time back in the beginning of this decade, but couldn't secure the necessary backing to make an all-out effort. So he regrouped, formed his own team, and attacked the less costly Bush Grand National Circuit. When you decided to go Bush Grand National Racing, Mike, what, what precipitated the move? They ran more racetracks than the Winston Cup did. <clears throat> they uh, you had more exposure if you were in the Winston Cup situations. Uh, the Grand National Series was a prime opportunity for me. Uh, if I could start running more of those races, then uh, maybe the exposure would come to us, and obviously it did. Maybe not the circumstances we wanted it to come with, but uh, yet somebody out there saw that we were dedicated racers and gave us a chance. Mike finished a very strong fifth in the Bush Grand National point standings in 1987. Many felt he had a good chance to be selected from one of the several vacant Winston Cup rides as the 1988 season loomed ahead. For one reason or another, he was overlooked. Mike, back in the early 1988, did it bother you when some of the other drivers that were running uh, along with you in the Bush Grand National Series, such as Brett Bodine, Dale Jarrett, Mark Martin, when they got rides in the series and you not, didn't necessarily get one, did it bother you at that point? No, it didn't upset me. Uh, those guys deserved to be there. They had run the Grand National Series for many years. Dale Jarrett, five years, I think, uh, before he moved to Winston Cup. So, no, I just knew that that, again, was another stepping stone. They made it. They made it to Winston Cup. And if I could get in there and continue to be dedicated in racing, I'd make it. While Bobby Allison was winning the opening Bush Grand National Race of the Year in Daytona, Mike Alexander posted a very strong seventh. The next race of the series was on the small but challenging Hickory Speedway. It was an open date on the Winston Cup calendar, so Dale Earnhardt, Harry Gant, and Morgan Shepard, to name just a few, decided to enter the race. Mike Alexander, in car 84, started towards the rear of the field, but didn't stay there very long. He drove like a man possessed and outdueled everyone on the way to a well-deserved victory. His reputation as a polished, hard-nosed racer received a tremendous boost when Ricky Rudd damaged knee ligaments during the Winston in May. Mike was picked to substitute in the Quaker State Buick the next week. Remarkably, Mike drove the car to a top 10 finish. When Bobby Allison was hurt, the entire racing world was stunned and saddened, including Mike Alexander. Mike's wife is a good friend of Bobby Allison's daughter, Bonnie. Well, we're, we're somewhat close to the Allisons, and uh, my wife and uh, Bonnie are quite close. And when I got home from a race, Bonnie had already called and said her dad had been in, involved in an accident. So obviously we were concerned and, and very concerned. Uh, Monday morning, we got a call from Ed Bracefield and, and was wondering if we would be interested in driving that car. Well, sure, we had qualms about it. We didn't know for sure that, that this was the right thing for me to do. Uh, not that I didn't want to. I mean, obviously, the, it's a great honor to be chosen to drive Bobby Allison's race car. Uh, the Stavola brothers finally made the decision that, that, yeah, maybe we would like to have you in the car for two races. Let's see how things go. And I accepted that. Uh, with great honors, I accepted that. But yet, still, at the same time, we were a little bit leery on how maybe the Allisons felt about it. But um, when they told us that Judy and, and the rest of the family had uh, sort of voted that that's who we'd like to have in the car, we jumped at the chance. To. Mike was so impressive in his substitute role that he was signed for the remainder of the year. The physical and mental demands of running the entire Bush Grand National and Winston Cup schedules were grueling, but Mike never complained. An even heavier burden was driving a car that bore the name Bobby Allison above the driver's window. Yeah, but as I've said many times, I cannot fill his shoes. I don't even try to. Uh, the, the only thing we can do is do what he would want us to do, and that's stay out of trouble, finish races, and get the experience that I'm going to need the next year. Uh, and right now, he helps us as much as he can. 
in experience that we can call if we're in trouble and uh, tell him what the car is doing and he can offer a suggestion and that's something that's very valuable to us to use his experience and use his race cars that he's been so successful in with Stavolo Brothers and Miller High Life that you know yeah it's tough for me to come in there and and uh, still try to be humble at the same time I've got to try to drive that race car to the maximum ability of that car and yet sometimes I think I don't have the experience but we're gaining on it. Mike Alexander has proved he belongs in the Winston Cup Series, both as a driver and as a person. It's true that driving equipment built for Bobby Allison is the opportunity of a lifetime, but there aren't many people who could have handled the pressure of living and driving in the shadow of Bobby Allison. Steve, I'm sure a lot of fans out there don't realize that Darrell Waltrip drove for Mike Alexander's dad before Darrell went into Winston Cup racing, and then, of course, Mike took over on the short tracks, and that's how his racing career started. It just shows you it's a very close-knit family here in Winston Cup racing. We need to take a short break. When we come back, you'll meet the veteran Herschel McGriff, and we'll also have some fan club information. And as we leave you for this break, here's a trivia question. <laughs> 